What a mess, you guys. Democratic presidential nominee Kamala Harris just got booed at her own rally. But even worse is how she almost cussed out pro-Gaza protesters. Check this out. As we move our nation forward, Donald Trump intends to take our nation backward. Just look at his Project 2025 agenda. Project 2025. And please do check out Project 2025, because I'm telling you, it is a plan. It is a plan to weaken America's middle class. Project 2025, if he is elected. I'm here because we believe in democracy. Everyone's voice matters, but I am speaking now. I am speaking now. So Project 2025, look, if he is elected, Donald Trump intends to give tax breaks to billionaires and big corporations. He intends to cut Social Security and Medicare. He intends to surrender our fight against the climate crisis. And he intends to end the Affordable Care Act. You know what? If you want Donald Trump to win, then say that, otherwise I'm speaking. I mean, after watching this, you kind of see why 90% of her staffers left her butt, right? It's like there's a smugness that she just can't hide inside and it just kind of emanates like a stink that you just can't shake. You know what I mean? And did you hear what she said about how they believe in democracy when literally nobody voted for her in a non-existent primary? Crazy, right? But really, the moment was a moment of pressure for the Democratic nominee and it kind of showed how she reacts to pressure. I mean, you saw it for yourself. The crowd got wild at the biggest rally thus far for Kamala Harris's campaign and the Democratic nominee, she just snapped when it got out of hand. Even Kamala's running mate, vice presidential nominee Tim Waltz, felt the mood. But of course, he tried sugarcoating it by saying, holy hell, can you throw a party here in Michigan? But among the crowd were the pro-Gaza protesters of her presidential campaign that slipped into the event to heckle her from the sidelines. They were calling her out for her poor response to the current administration to the Israel-Hamas war in the Middle East. They chanted, Kamala, Kamala, you can't hide. We don't want no genocide. To that, the vice president basically told him to shut up. She said that she's speaking, but the critics argued that she was really just saying nothing. Just a big old word salad, if you will. And as you guys saw, the crowd was not happy. In fact, it was the roughest rally yet for Kamala Harris and her running mate, Tim Waltz, who are on a multiple state tour right now. You see, the war in Israel is a huge issue for Michigan, which has a very large Muslim population. And Harris, as a member of Joe Biden's administration has faced a lot of criticism for not enough being done to help civilians in Gaza. You see, no matter how hard they try, they just can't shake the fact that Kamala Harris is part and parcel of President Biden. I mean, she's the second highest ranking official in the administration right now. So why isn't she doing anything about the problems that really matter? You know, that's what people are saying about her and her presidential campaign. And speaking of Biden, people were reminded of him when Kamala repeated one of Joe Biden's classic blunders at a rally in Arizona. She almost suffered an embarrassing stumble or a fall, if you will, as she was met with a wild reception at a rally in Arizona. Check it out. Hey. 
So the 59-year-old president jumped up the stairs in Glendale and appeared to catch her foot but avoided falling over, something President Joe Biden has repeated several times while in office. Now in the same rally though, the Democratic nominee made a very surprising admission about Donald Trump and the current state of the presidential race. You see, they're trying to make it look like Donald Trump's campaign lost momentum after Kamala Harris replaced Biden in the Democratic ticket. But in the Arizona rally, she surprisingly warned her supporters that they are still the underdogs in the election. So yeah, you never really know what you're getting with Kamala Harris or Kambala as former President Donald Trump calls her. So for instance, you have this recent Time Magazine cover story featuring Vice President Kamala Harris, despite her refusing in an interview with the publication and her long-standing dodging of the press. I mean, what's up with that, right? Now, of course, her conservative critics were not going to let this go. To say Time Magazine got slapped with criticism is an understatement. I mean, just check out these tweets for some conservative commentators. So you got international marketing political strategist and fundraiser Joey Marinino. They worship a woman who refuses to even talk to them. Absolutely ridiculous and absurd. The black gay veteran Republican icon Rob Smith says, in three weeks, the U.S. regime propaganda media transformed Kamala Harris from being a national embarrassment to an iconic and transformational politician while not even pretending to know or even care what she believes. Incredible. Geiger Capital, who covers markets, economics, politics, said, the way the U.S. corporate media has tried to transform Kamala Harris from a consensus joke to a historic leader in just a matter of weeks without even pretending to care about her policies or ideas, it just shows how blatant U.S. propaganda has become. This is North Korea level worshiping. <laughs> wow, guys. So yeah, they're comparing what Time Magazine did with Kamala Harris to North Korea level worshiping. I mean, that's got to ring some alarm bells, right? Meanwhile, we have former President Donald Trump entertaining interviews and press conferences from everyone, including Tesla founder and billionaire tech mogul Elon Musk. So Elon Musk, he chatted with Donald Trump for about two hours on X and Kamala Harris's campaign went absolutely nuts throwing all sorts of insane rhetoric, including that Musk was somehow trying to control our democracy by, wait for it, having a conversation with one of the two major presidential candidates? I mean, if that were true, then why did Elon Musk extend an identical offer to Kamala Harris herself? You see, her argument doesn't even make sense. And she was an attorney at one point. She must have been a really sucky attorney. I'd never hire her. And pretty much like any interview with the actual press, she has yet to take the tech tighten up on it. I mean, just think about it. For all of Kamala's huffing and puffing, a conversation with Elon Musk would offer an opportunity to speak unfiltered to a vast audience across across the ideological spectrum and maybe even change some minds. But then again, they say it's the unfiltered part of the deal that Harris is afraid of because according to her critics, the truth is without a teleprompter, she's almost as bad as her current boss. But what do you guys think? Do you feel like Kamala Harris stands a chance against Donald Trump? Well, we're going to take a long, hard look at that right now, guys. Do not go away. So we're diving in right now. As soon as you hit the like button and subscribe, all right? All right, let's go. So really guys, the Kamala Harris Michigan rally was one for the history books filed under uncontrollably bad examples. There were pro-Gaza protesters, which Harris tried to downplay, but they say the event was ruckus from the start beginning with Kamala Harris's rock star entrance. She basically stole yet another move out of Donald Trump's playbook for the event and basically pulled up to the rally in her Air Force One plane. They even played Beyonce's Run the World as the plane came down the tarmac. What do you guys think? Pretty similar to Donald Trump during the 2020 election when he used Air Force One as a backdrop for his campaign speeches. Wow, she stole another one from Donald Trump. Then came curse-filled speeches from the likes of United Auto Workers President Sean Fain, Democratic Governor Gretchen Whitmer, and of course, Democratic Vice Presidential nominee Tim Waltz. He let loose during his remarks. He praised Whitmer for knowing how to fix the damn roads and told the crowd, you've got a treasure here in Michigan. But all of the speakers had to stop their remarks to direct medical personnel to where they were needed in the crowd as multiple people fainted. At least six people needed medical attention over the course of the rally. People were shouting, water, water, and medic, medic, as rally goers collapsed in the crowd. Then of course, Kamala Harris came on and did her thing. But really, it was her moment in the pro-Gaza protesters that really stole the show that day. It pretty much revealed the vice president's character to the people, and many people were not impressed. In Arizona, too, where she almost tripped going up the stage, kind of like Joe Biden, and then admitted that they're still the underdogs in the election. But really, guys, I'm not really sure if they're just trying to get the sympathy vote here, because so far, the race is a dead heat, according to a new CBS News YouGov poll. 
nationally, Kamala Harris now leads Donald Trump in the race 50% to 49% among likely voters. In battleground states, the race is now tied at 50% each. But seriously, guys, expect things to change once word gets out about more of this time propaganda profile of Kamala Harris. So the Time cover story depicted Kamala Harris with her supporters in the background on the cover with the phrase, her moment. Inside, the author Charlotte Alter wrote that Kamala Harris pulled off the swiftest vibe shift in modern political history. But that doesn't change the fact that Kamala Harris has yet to sit down for an interview after replacing President Joe Biden on top of the Democratic presidential ticket. Trump's team has even pointed out that it feels like the media are working right alongside Harris to boost her image. I mean, just look at this Time magazine cover. But as many critics point out, it's pretty much like Harris herself, all feelings and light on substance. Instead of Harris, the piece interviewed Harris's allies like Department of Transportation Secretary Pete Buttigieg, CNN's Bakary sellers and gun control activist David Hogg. Journalist Glenn Greenwald posted on X about how the way the U.S. corporate media transformed Kamala Harris from a national embarrassment to a transformative pioneer overnight without even pretending to care about anything that she thinks or even believes. He says it's a powerful testament to how potent the science of propaganda is. Writer Jim Preacher said it even quicker. Journos worshiping politicians, terrific. Meanwhile, Kamala Harris is all too happy ignoring invites to sit down interviews. One very particular example is the Elon Musk interview with former President Donald Trump on X. It was two hours with the former commander in chief and Kamala once again was a no-show. Why? Well, according to the critics, Kamala Harris was afraid of an interview because she's not going to have a teleprompter like usual. So they say that she's worried about her word salads, the spur of the moment flip flops and the uncanny cackles. Basically, her seemingly complete inability to function off script. And take note, guys, we are less than three months before the presidential election and the Democratic candidate is still being very cagey about what her policy and her platform actually is. By the way, guys, Kamala Harris hasn't exactly come out to explain why she shifted her stance on things like fracking ban or bailing out rioters. Instead, her aides just handled those announcements, skipping the nitty gritty details about why she changed her mind or whether she might change her mind back after the election. Who knows where she stands on any important policies? And by the looks of the recent fluff-filled headlines, it really doesn't seem like the media is too eager to dig into these issues either. Now, if you guys notice, places like New York Times, they really seem to be rooting for her, which is probably why she gets such an easy ride in the press. But even with the media not pressing too hard, it's pretty unlikely that Harris would agree to a tough interview. Would she even sit down for a candid chat with one of the friendlier journalists? At this point, I'm not even sure anymore. Anything more substantial than her usual campaign spiel, it could stir up a lot of controversy. And it looks like she would rather not risk it. You know what I mean, guys? But drop your thoughts on Kamala Harris in the comments down below. You, you guys are a fan of her? Do you think she's a deserving candidate? Let me know what you guys think. We can make a conversation out of it. More on this one in the next one. And don't go away just yet, guys, because I have another video that I want to recommend to you guys. It's about Kamala Harris finally agreeing to an interview after Donald Trump gets under his skin. I know, we got the side-by-side -side comparison and everything. Definitely check that video out after after this one. But as always, thanks so much for hitting the like button. Thank you for subscribing and sharing this video. I'll see you on the next one.